Hello everyone. So this is the third reason why I invest in silver. Um, it's a pretty significant one. It's probably one of the biggest reasons why I'm invested in silver. Um, and I think you'll probably probably agree. But uh, And this also applies to any other physical metals that you're invested in. Um, physically is what I'm talking about here. All right. So that's the fact that this investment is completely out of the system. Um, if we look, and, and this is a big thing for me now, um, especially the way the world is going. Um, we can look, I'm going to do some comparisons here. Um, if we look at the stock market, right? So you're owning shares in a company. Uh, before we actually used to have, well, we, I mean, I wasn't in there, but the, there used to be pieces of paper with the ownership of your shares. So you actually had something in hand and you had your shares and then you went to redeem them and train them. Um, now it's all electronic for sure, which is, I mean, I mean, it's, it's the best way to go for sure. But uh, of course, you're in the system. So if the um, if your broker goes down, if the stock market closure goes, um, you don't have access to those those shares, right? So um, that's one example. Bonds, same thing, right? Bonds are used to be on on paper too, but um, bonds are just investments, right? You're 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 kind of funding somebody else's debt. Uh, you're getting a coupon for that. You're making interest rates. You're making income. Nothing wrong with the investment. Is I'm not dissing any of these. But I'm just comparing them that th this is a an investment also that's in the system um, that you need to log into your computer, you need to get on the internet, you need to go on. It doesn't sound like a big thing or a big risk, but uh, in my mind, it, it could be. Um, real estate. Real estate is another one where uh, it's very interesting. Even if you have your full, um, let's say your, your debt is fully paid, you have no mortgage, you got nothing, um, you're still... It's still not your asset, meaning you're still on a land where you're paying taxes, you're paying your all your energy bills, you're paying for your water probably, your sewage. Um, you got all these bills attached to it. Uh, so I think um, I think that's very interesting too, because you're still no matter what, even if you're you're debt free, um, just know that it's still tied to something. Um, then we go to let's say art. So some people invest in art. I would have no idea how to do it, but some people are really good at it, and uh, they see the value in it, and and they did their research, and that is something that's pretty much out of the system. Um, it, <clears throat> yeah, I would say it is. The only thing I, I I would say about that a disadvantage a little bit is that if your house burns down, say, and you got a piece of art, um, it probably burned down and you lost it. Um, that's one of the reasons why I would say silver or gold or platinum is superior to that investment just because even if it does melt down, um, and even if it does burn, it just melts down and it, you can still recover it, um, for the value of that metal. And then there's collectibles, which is kind of the same, same idea. So just some, some different things I wanted to touch on there for different assets and how they're still in a system. Um, they're not stand standalone kind of investments. Um, so yeah, that's that's very important. Also, I want I want to touch on to uh, the the word I'm looking for is counterparty risk, right? There's no counterparty risk when you actually have the actual physical metal. Now, I'm obviously not talking about ETFs or SLV or uh, any kind of mining companies. I I'm talking about the actual physical thing in your hands. Um, another cool, unique thing about uh, silver, gold, or platinum is that there's energy stored into that coin or that bar. Um, there's a lot that goes into um, producing that ounce of silver, that ounce of gold. I'm working, I'm actually flying up tomorrow for I'm in the hotel room, as you can see. Uh, this is not a fake background, but um, I'm actually um, I'm actually flying up to site where I'm working for a gold mining company. And uh, so I know what goes into this. I know all the challenges. I know all the capital expenditures, all the OPEX, everything that goes into it. Um, there's a huge amount of efforts that goes into creating this one little silver and gold coin. It's incredible. So you're you're holding that as the final product. Um, no counterparty risk, nothing uh, owed to anyone. It's not tied to anything. Um, there's something very special about that. And I think uh, past generations understood that. And that's why it was money for so long. And I think that's the, the main reason why I'm going to say this is my third reason I own silver, gold, or platinum is to really take some a portion of my wealth and bring outside of, of your um, outside of the system where you can access it quickly, 
uh, doesn't mean you have to be in your home. I mean, you got you to gotta diversify your storage, make sure you're safe and keep your family safe. Um, but having that asset that is out of the out of the system readily available to you and backing your wealth, I think is really important. It's a really nice tool for generational wealth too, something you can leave behind uh, to your kids and their grandkids and and, uh, and so forth. I also think it's better than holding cash um, in hand just because of inflation and everything that comes with it. I think the metal is a, is a, metal, a better option. Um, I think I'll leave it at that. I think that summarizes my thought on, on this. Please let me know in your comments what you think. If you agree, if you don't agree, if I miss something, I'd appreciate it. All right. Thanks. Bye.